Executives at General Motors are clearly excited about the potential for their all-new full-size pickups, the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra. Both are set to go into production late this year, and GM expects both to bring home more profits per truck than the current Silverado and Sierra. But GM's chief financial officer, Chuck Stevens, recently made clear that the road from here to those fat profits would be a bumpy one, because putting these new pickups into production won't be simple. While GM won't begin production of the new trucks until the fourth quarter of 2018, it has already begun making the extensive changes to its factories that will be required to build them. GM is clearly hoping to learn from our rival Ford Motor Company's experience. The launch of Ford's all-new 2015 F-150 followed months of fevered work. That new F-150 had aluminum body panels instead of the steel panels of its predecessor, meaning that it required very different tooling and processes to build. Ford had to essentially gut and rebuild two of its busiest factories at a moment when pickup demand was booming. Ford pulled it off, but not without a cost. The company warned beforehand that it would lose about 90,000 units of production. It had built up inventories of 2014 model year pickups before beginning the factory conversions, but still, Ford's pickup sales lagged for several months while it worked to get the factories up and running again. Helped by a very strong market, the new F-150 helped carry Ford to record profits in 2015 and 2016. But here in 2018, the US new car market is looking a little ragged, and so GM has come up with a plan that it hopes will improve somewhat on Ford's experience. GM's new trucks don't have all aluminum body panels. But as Stevens explained during GM's earnings call this week, the new trucks really are all new, completely different from the current models. That means GM has to make extensive, and expensive, changes to major sections of its truck factories that assemble the truck's bodies and chassis. Those changes have already begun, and they're already having an impact. Stevens said that investors should expect a 60,000-unit decline in GM shipments in North America in the first quarter, largely due to downtime at GM's pickup factories. That's a big hit. To put it in perspective, while GM doesn't release exact production figures for every model, we know that it sold about 178,000 Silverados and Sierras combined in the US in the first three months of 2017. GM is losing production equivalent to a third of its full-size pickup sales in the first quarter of last year. Given the profitability of these trucks, that's a heavy hit. How GM will keep that number from getting worse? In total, Stevens said, GM expects to lose about 120,000 units of production in 2018 due to factory changes needed to make the all-new trucks. But there's a twist, GM has a complicated plan to boost production of its current trucks while some of its factories are retooled. In a nutshell, GM's Fort Wayne assembly plant, in Roanoke, Indiana, will send partially assembled trucks and parts to its highly flexible Oshawa assembly plant, in Ontario, which will paint and finish the trucks. If that sounds a little bit Rube Goldberg, well, it is. It's a hack, one that GM has nicknamed the Oshawa Shuttle. They hope the shuttle will allow them get about 60,000 extra 2018 model pickups built this year. If it works, it will leave GM with a production decline of about 60,000. That's not ideal, but it beats the 90,000 trucks that Ford lost in 2014 and 2015. More importantly, while GM will probably take a hit to its first quarter results, it should be able to make up some of the lost profit by year end. The Honda Civic Type R doesn't just look fast, it is fast. It's proven this by setting a front-wheel drive Nürburgring lap record. But not about to rest on its laurels, Honda plans to make lap record attempts at other tracks as well with former Formula One champion Jensen Button behind the wheel. This is similar to what Honda did with the previous generation Civic Type R, setting records at Silverstone, Spartan Court Champs, Monza, Estrell, and Hungering in 2016. 
This year, Honda will return to Silverstone in the UK, Spartan Core Champs in Belgium, and Estrel in Portugal to set new records with the new model. Button will not be the only driver to make these record attempts. He will be joined by World Touring Car Cup drivers Chiago Montero and Esteban Guerreri, as well as NSX Super GT driver Bertrand Baguette. Button himself also competes in NSX Super GT. If any car is ready to capture some front-wheel drive lap records, it's the Civic Type R. Despite its high expectations, it's already proven to be an underrated car with the engine rated at 306 horsepower at the crank, actually generated 295 horsepower at the wheels, indicating a significantly higher power output than advertised. And that's even before a rumored Civic Type RS and other variants become available. Daimler, the world's most substantial truck manufacturer, just announced that it will begin customer trials of its new pure electric Electro semi-truck. The truck was the first of its kind to be revealed to the world back in 2016. Despite being ahead of Tesla with its unveiling, the truck maker says it needs the next few years for testing and will bring the vehicle to market by 2021. Tesla's Elon Musk, on the other hand, is shooting for delivery of his electric semi beginning in 2019. Daimler's head of trucks, Martin Dom recently told reporters that if Tesla achieves its target date and specs, his company will have made some terrible estimations. He admits that the Electros doesn't stand up to the range that Tesla is advertising, up to 500 miles on a single charge, but he feels that with current battery tech, the Silicon Valley company can possibly achieve that number within the next year or two. Belm stated, if Tesla really delivers on this promise, we'll obviously buy two trucks, one to take apart and one to test because if that happens, something has passed us by. But for now, the same laws of physics apply in Germany and in California. The Electros will have a maximum range of 124 miles, about 200 kilometers. So, it's not just a little bit of a difference, but instead, not even in the ballpark. Daimler has budgeted some $616 million to make this effort possible and will work through customer trials for the next two years or more before the trucks are ready for mass production. Belm continued, trucks have to run for 1.5 million miles and then there's a used truck buyer too after that. We don't know for sure how batteries for trucks will react after being in use for 4 to 5 years, it's very complex. The automaker revealed that, like Tesla, there will be two different size semis available, 18 tons and 26 tons. In terms of charging, a figure of 3 to 11 hours was specified. It used to be that you could find the foreman's pickup at any work site by looking for the lone Sierra among a sea of Silverados. Local General Motors spokeswoman Stephanie Gentkin said last week, that's changing. Starting with the 2019 model year, the Sierra will be much more than a shinier, souped-up Silverado. But, depending on the specific version, the Sierra won't necessarily be more expensive than a Silverado. General Motors is working really hard to differentiate the two truck brands. There's only a few common parts in the next generation as opposed to now. On Thursday, GM officials in Detroit will unveil the next generation GMC Sierra. Until then, the design and details are closely guarded. The Chevy Silverado debuted in January, and early reactions to the reworked Silverado have been positive. Motor Trend described the overall look as bolder and bigger. Consumer Reports described the 2019 Silverado's unveiling as arguably the most important event of this year's Detroit Auto Show. The national publications annually review cars and trucks. At least one stakeholder close to home was impressed. Holly Murphy, president of United Auto Workers Local 2209 which represents GM's local workers said, it's absolutely beautiful. 
Jenkins said, local GM employees are heavily invested in the two models' success. Although the trucks are built in three GM plants, the Allen County location is the lead assembly plant for this launch. That means you have to perform flawlessly, which is a great honor and says a lot about our employees. We just have an incredibly experienced workforce that cares deeply about the customer. The local plant, which is one of Allen County's largest employers, has about 4,000 hourly and salaried workers on three shifts. The plant received the J.D. Power Gold Plant Quality Award last year for producing the highest ranked automotive manufacturing quality in the Americas. J.D. Power Plant Quality Awards are based on defects and malfunctions. They exclude design-related problems. The Silverado's new design includes more interior, more cargo and more storage space, all bound to be popular with customers. Jenkins said about the Silverado, this truck is tougher. From the customer standpoint, it has so much more of what they want. While revealing one of two new designs, GM isn't putting the trucks on car lots until very late summer. Pricing and fuel economy numbers haven't yet been released. GM sold 585,864 Silverados last year, a 1.9% increase from 2016, and 217,943 Sierras, a 1.7% decrease. The Silverado is the second best-selling vehicle in the country. Only the Ford moves more units with its F-150 pickup. Overall, GM was the pickup sales leader for the fourth consecutive year, company officials said. The most popular GM pickup version is the Crew Cab, which boasts four full-sized doors. One change made locally with GM's $1.2 billion plant expansion is the ability to assemble crew cabs here. Jenkins said, previously, the local paint shop couldn't accommodate the longer vehicles. The fourth-generation Sierras and Silverados will start rolling down the assembly line in late summer. In the meantime, some vehicles will be assembled locally in practice runs that will be distributed to industry insiders. Local GM workers have had to work most Saturdays to build a stockpile of the current trucks because production will slow with the conversion. Even though people are tired, they're excited because they know, the new models are, the future of GM. We play a huge role in the future success of the company.